thank you so much to the Astro X community for understanding having to shift the AMA back a couple of times. It actually ended up working out really well because they were able to come on yesterday into the utility showcase and give a great presentation and a sneak peek here to the apes and you know almost 3,000 viewers now um, to what they're building out. So uh, a little bit of a background on Astro X. The token initially launched on October the 11th last year. It is an Ethereum based token. They did decide, you know, with what they were building, the API costs, and you know how expensive it can be to run some of those data driven um, back end stuff. You know, they were going to relaunch, increase the taxes from three to five percent uh, after a successful one to one um, airdrop. These guys went live again on the 22nd of October, and they've just been really focused on growing the user base and their utilities some, from there. So. Again, I really do like uh, what they have so far. Right now, their X-based API allows you to track Ethereum-based wallets and X accounts real time. Personally, I love your slogan. I'm a, I'm a marketing guy, so that type of stuff hits home. Um, but I, I also really like the use case potential. And we talked a little bit about it yesterday. It's not just a product that, that can be used for Web3. Yes, you know, we're here, we're talking about crypto, uh, but when we're talking about content creators and influencers across, you know, Web2 brands, making sure you get the best ROI on your marketing spend is so important. And I think what I learned about coming into crypto is a lot of the people who are setting their prices, you know, some of these calls or influencers probably didn't work much in the corporate wheel world because they're, they're a little bit outlandish from time to time. I've heard a hundred K from some of these people on Twitter for, you know, a month of support. And I'm like, man, try and sell that to a company in the real world. Like you're, you're going to be laughed at. So I love what you guys are doing to try and bring credibility to, you know, some of these influencers, some of these brands, content creators, and allow that, you know, real time data driven decision making for your users. So yeah, again, a little bit longer winded on my intro, but I, I really do connect well with this considering my, my personal personal kind of background in the marketing world and, you know, understanding how in crypto there is a lot of uh, misguided information. So I think this is, is a great utility and a great fit. So without further ado, I'll pass the mic over to the team here from Astro X and really excited to, to jump into everything with you guys today. Awesome. Th th thanks a lot for having us. Um, I'll begin with a brief introduction of the team. There's obviously the crypto Joel, who is the owner of the project and he's been in the crypto industry for about eight to nine years. Uh, there's the dev team, the dev team of a few members. Uh, there's three moderators, Sage, TJ, and Dan. And then there's myself, uh, who handles marketing and communications. Uh, in terms of my background, history, where I come from, what I do. So I'm from the UK. Uh, my crypto space name is Adsi. My real name is Mohammed. Uh, I'm doxed uh, with a marketing agency incorporated in the UK. Uh, we serve IRL businesses, so non crypto businesses. Um, I'm part of the Astroix core team. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it for myself. I'll hand it over to Joel so he can introduce himself. Hey, thanks, Adsy, for that warm introduction. Uh, as Adsy mentioned, I'm Joel, aka uh, Crypto Joel. Uh, as far as my personal experience and background, uh, I work for the Department of Defense uh, in program management. I've actually been in the military for about 17 years now. Uh, 15 of those have been uh, within special operations. I uh, started my crypto journey in 2015, not knowing what I was doing at all. And, you know, some might still argue that, you know, it's it's a daily experience and you learn something new every day. But started to get more heavily into crypto in mid-2017 and NFTs as well. And it's kind of been uh, full steam ahead since then. Uh, AstroX is my first project that I, I've, I've started. Been in the background of several other projects on the moderator standpoint inside the house. But, but yeah, this is the first one that I've been um, leading the charge. Well, it's great to have both you here and Joel, obviously your background uh, as well. You know, I've never served, but, uh, you know, I'm up here in Canada. A couple of my, my close friends are still in the, the Navy, the military up here. So obviously, thank you for what you do outside of the, the crypto space. Um, yeah, it, it's pretty cool. Uh, one of our partners is actually focused on um, giving back to the veterans and supporting those that, are, that have been in the service. So, you know, kind of a concept that's, that's something near and dear to my heart, but I don't want to go too too deep into that. Just wanted to say thank you for, for what you do and really cool to learn a little bit more about your personal background uh, and working in defense, right? Like, you know, anytime a, a new tech, a new utility, um, something that that connects or, or tracks wallets comes into play, people are always, always asking about, you know, how secure is it? You know, what type of information do I have to give? And the fact that this can be, you know, as I mentioned in my intro, kind of cross 
utilized for web two or web three in terms of that that user or um, content creator experience and making sure they're, they're tracked and kind of kept um what the best word, i guess with like uh you know making sure they're responsible with their pricing um yeah i just wanted to go into some of like what you bring from a security perspective because how are you going to position this to those web two brands and businesses that would be able to give you guys a lot of exposure like you know we're talking about brands or you know so, so, for example like a follower's got like a million subscribers and, and pushes out um content for some of the bigger named like makeup companies or, or just as a hypothetical right yeah i mean i suppose when it comes to that particular hurdle uh, when it comes to addressing you know irl web 2 um we'll, it's, it's going to be very different from it, it's it's a similar model the technology is similar as well, but it's it's there's a lot of key differences. So, for example, I, don't, I mean, I'll have to go into some of the details a little bit later about the specifics of how it, our how our technology actually works when it comes to tracking, uh, you know, contract addresses and and giving those contract addresses alias with tickers and how we actually analyze if an influence or call has an impact uh, on a particular project and what have you. Uh, but definitely we'll go into some of the details with regards to the web two um, a little bit later because that, we kind of need to provide some context for that first no 100 percent. I, I just um you know just with joel's background in defense and you know the, the fact that uh, a lot of the times the the main hesitation for brands or companies coming into web three is security uh he, he definitely has a unique potentially positioning aspect you know with with his background so um we'll be excited to, to jump into more of that with you later on now maybe starting off i do want to go through the origin so uh what caused uh from from the team's identification like the need to move from that v1 to the v2 so i'm going to bring it all the way back to the start uh, you know last october um talking from the token perspective yeah, so that's a great question, Maurice. Uh, so when we when we launched uh, B1, uh, we started with 3.3 for taxes. Um, at the onset, we were using the the X API basic plan, so it was very minimal costs. Um, at that point, it wasn't providing real time updates. Uh, there's a delay, and you're you have limits and whatnot using that basic version. And so as we started to build out, we quickly identified and realized that you know the basic plan wasn't going to cut it for what we wanted to do and what we wanted to offer to our users. Um, with that increase to the premium API, which bumped it up to, to $5,000 a month USD cost for that access, uh, we realized that, you know, taxes at 3.3 were, it was already tight as it was. And in order to really build out and continue to grow the, the project, 5.5 uh, five was necessary to Feed, feed the development of the bot, the the API for X, as well as the numerous other APIs we use for our sentiment analysis and and for wallet analysis and whatnot. So that's kind of what onset the the launch and the, the allocate the collection of of the V1 tokens and then the the airdrop for for V2. Perfect. And and obviously you guys were able to to go through that process uh, fairly smoothly. And, you know, with the, the relaunch in October of 22nd of, of last year, it's coming up on almost six months. So, you know, you guys are well on your way. Like the community is really starting to establish themselves. Um, now I wanted to kind of touch on in those six months, what have some of the, the usage statistics been like of your bot? Um, how have you seen the numbers growing on that side? Because I'm never, I've never really been a chart guy when it comes to anything utility based. It, you know, it's all about are the KPIs behind the scenes growing? And if so, you know, timing is kind of going to be that, you know, the factor often that that determines if you're successful or not. Yeah, absolutely. So right now we're tracking about uh, 350 uh, accounts across uh, X, uh, specifically for, for the data we pulled. Um, it's about 600,000 tweets that have been pulled. Uh, if you take into account uh, retweets and comments into those, we've pulled about 2.5 million total. Uh, for hashtags, we've got 18,000 hashtag, hashtags in the database with about 130,000 instances of those. And then finally with, with tickers or your cash tags, uh, we currently track 62,000 tickers in the database and over 300,000 instances of those. Uh, those are the numbers to date. Uh, they've grown as exponentially as we we grow and, and you know it puts us in a unique spot with the the database ever growing and, and increasing all this all this information that we can analyze and 
and turn into intelligence for for users to to actually make decisions on. So so as we grow, those numbers just continue to go up, and you know it's it's looking very bright. Yeah, no, and that's that's really impressive. Like some of those numbers, I was just kind of taking some notes and wrote some like the just the the numbers there down. I mean, really, I mean, yeah, definitely nothing nothing to bat your eyelashes. I mean, definitely nothing to like ignore. Like that's impressive growth. Uh, what sectors, like within maybe the last couple of months, have you guys seen that the biggest growth on? Like which types of influencers is you know uh, people focus on maybe game five versus. Uh, meme coins like where are you guys seeing uh the biggest i guess response or hit on some of those cash tags and tickers that you're following uh, within the space so, you know I, i'm kind of nerdy when it comes to data so there, there's a point to the question but it's going to kind of take two or three to get there joel you want to take this one all right go ahead Adzi. so okay so um in this over the six months the amount of data we've acquired isn't a significant amount that will give us enough insight into determining determining where you know which 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 ones have the most traction behind them or which ones have the the you know the the largest amount of followers or the largest amount of people attaching themselves to um that being said there are plans to to do a mass data expansion so increase the number of tick tickers that are being tracked increase the amount of x accounts or specific calls and influences that are being tracked just to make sure that we're kind of getting that data, but it's still early stages. The user base is still small at the moment. I think we only have about 350 tracked X accounts at the minute. Uh, we're hoping uh, that within the next 30 days, we'll have an additional 1000 tracked accounts and that will be the team members who are actively adding um, tracked accounts to the, the bot. Um, I suppose one of the reasons that we don't have such a huge data set at the minute, although it's still quite reasonable um, for the time period, is because we've had quite a few sets, setbacks uh, with the with the development. So we did have a developer who was on board with us from the beginning, um, who unfortunately fell quite sick, um, had experienced kidney failure. Um, and so we were, we were spending a lot of time trying to fine tune some aspects of the utility whilst he was unwell uh, we then had to go you know go through a process of vetting new developers and interviewing new developers and trying to find somebody who could replace him who understood the technology who understood the code and that took quite long as well eventually we did find a developer to replace uh, the old dev um, and then we then the new developer then realized that there were some problems with the initial coding structure uh, so we, we had to rebuild a lot of those. Uh, we had to rebuild a lot of the code out, which has taken a bit of time. We are now back on track, uh, and obviously, I'd like to go into some of the other the, the things that we, we will be changing. For example, we've managed to find a way to transition away from the X API, which has such a high running cost, to to some to some lower software, to some lower cost softwares. So we're reducing our running costs possibly by by forty to fifty percent, uh, and and. So, and such things like that um but i did i did kind of want to touch on the reason why um astro x is here because obviously we're talking about some of the data and and, and, and the kpis and what have you uh, but i think a lot of the users who probably don't i mean a lot of the listeners now who probably don't know much about astro x or the reason why we came about and what they can actually use the utility for apart from just tracking x accounts um so th the reason Astro X is here. The reason we came about, I like to go into, you know, the problem that the industry experiences, and that's the crypto industry being quite a risk-ridden industry, uh, plagued a lot by speculation, um, especially when it comes to the lower to mid market cap levels, where you know a lot of the market movement is determined by trends and and influences influences and calls. Um, so we've got a lot of these new crypto users and these new investors who come into the industry uh, and they met with this constant narrative of crypto being very high risk. Uh, and then we've got old and veteran crypto enthusiasts such as yourself, Maurice, and, and, and many of the others uh, who are listening in today. Uh, and they've been in the industry for maybe one or two or three or five or six or 10 years. And they've grown accustomed to something that we all refer to as aping, which is essentially a better term of what is essentially gambling right where we're jumping into projects and investments without actually having a strategy that can provide 
you know, consistent, profitable results. And so the reason Astro X was born was to kind of change this narrative, which obviously can, can't be done straight away. It takes time. Uh, but the narrative that we wanted to change was to make crypto less speculative and to make it a safer environment um, to allow, you know, the new traders who are coming into the industry and the veterans such as yourself and everybody else listening to make, you know, better, more informed investment decisions by helping them to enter trades earlier than they normally would have uh, and essentially increasing profitability and reducing the risks uh, that are generally associated with trend uh, trend chasing. Uh, one of the other principles and one of the other purposes behind Astro X is that there's a lot of anonymity uh, in the crypto space and people, you know, influencers and calls, uh, not all of them, uh, but some of them, they're not held accountable um, with the followers that they have and the influence that they have. Um, which so we wanted to make sure that people could actually see which influences and calls are genuinely having an impact on the market uh, and allowing people to make make sure that they're making those right decisions because they don't they're not necessarily equipped with all of the information uh, in, in you know the, the, the all of the, the the know-how of how to handle crypto and where to look and to make sure that you're making the right trades so how can we make those steps a lot easier how can we make those initial choices a lot easier for traders to make sure that they're making uh, the right decisions and to get those trades early and to increase that profitability um so the, the the way that we got there was that's where joel obviously realized that x is it's the primary user base for crypto followed by telegram that's where a lot of the information comes out it's real time that's where you hear about everything so we as astro x we were a first mover in the space we did something that was never done before in crypto uh, and that's obviously been mentioned where we created a bot that was integrated with the X API, and obviously I'll come on to the the transition that, that, that in, in in a few moments um, to obviously track X accounts of your choice, so influencers and calls and and even projects, um, and it, it was it was more than just having real time tracking, right? It's not just about getting the notifications of when a call posts something or when an influencer posts something. That's not necessarily the main part. What we did is we implemented a feature called the Astro X token scanner with alias allocation. And what that is, it's where a contract address can have a ticker allocated to it as an alias, allowing the bot to detect mentions of those tickers by tracked accounts and immediately attributing it to the related contract address. So what that basically means is that when any any time an influencer now mentions a particular ticker, that's been aliased or associated with a particular contract address. The bot can now see the chart that that's having an impact on. Is it having an impact? Is that particular mention having an impact on the price, the volume, the market cap, and at the different various time intervals that are set in the bot? Uh, what 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 is the actual impact that is having at those various time intervals? Um, so it allowed us no, to develop. I've seen. I, I just um, I, I didn't want to cut you off, but. Um, I wanted to ask about that specific, like the, the ticker aspect, because uh, as yeah, we're sure. probably all familiar for anybody who's in a group that has like a, an active CA scanner or like a, a contract bot, sometimes when you throw in that like I dash information uh, and then you try and type in the, the, the ticker, what will happen is it like pulls maybe an old token from like 2019 or 2020 that was launched with the same ticker. So like how did does the like that aspect of the API just make sure it's it's pulling like the relevant one just because there is so much, I guess, cross pollination okay. with some of the names and yeah, there's a lot of yeah. duplication in the name, right? Because you don't want I, I love that the concept's geared towards inclusivity because I've always said if somebody's first experience in crypto gets them wrecked, they're not probably gonna, you know, knock at that door a second time, at least right away. So you want to make sure that experience is positive. But on that note, I personally know one of the biggest issues for new people coming in is the duplication of tickers and buying what yeah. they think is the right project, but it's a dead project or something. So how does the bot kind of weigh into that? Absolutely, absolutely. That's a valid point. It's something that we've discussed internally as well, that we'll have tickers, uh, you know, duplicate tickers for, for, you know, we'll have the same ticker being used for multiple contract addresses, right? 
so how that's addressed at the moment is that it's done manually. So the tickers are attributed to a contract address manually. It's not the actual bot that does it. So it's actually the users of the uh, it's, it's the users of the bot, and it's us as team members who would manually allocate a ticker to a contract address. And what's that? Once that's been allocated to the co correct contract address, which the team would normally do our investigation to make sure that's the correct uh, contract address, and obviously we'd expect the users that when they are allocating a ticket to a contract address, they're already familiar with the contract. Once that's locked in, the bot immediately knows now that's the associated contract address and to continue to use that particular contract address. Now, um, on this, like, do you guys have a uh, standard like uh, inflow for those tickers and for users who are adding in information? Like, is there a, essentially like a sign up sheet or something that you'd be familiar in a traditional sense just to make it easier and standardize that process across the board? Joel, I think you could jump in here. So, so right now, as you mentioned, um, so when you scan a CA, it, it provides all the information and then you can add it to the, the track ticker. So that's how that's how they actually get associated. It's not like the other way around where where we're scanning for, for tickers and pulling all the CAs and throwing them all in there. Um, it's specific for each user of, of the bot. So when, a, when an individual user scans a CA and they, they want to say, OK, hey, I want to associate it with this ticker, then that that is associated for them for their particular instance. Uh, it could, if someone else scans, like finds a ticker and or finds a CA and they scan and they want to track that one and it has the same ticker, it'll be associated for them specifically. Um, it all feeds into the database, and so so we, we track it all, but but it's on an individual level. Um, as the, the Edson mentioned, um, us or the the team being able to add uh, tickers as well. Um, there, there's an admin role that lets us actually input the CAs. To associate them with tickers as well so that goes across the board so so it kind of alleviates that that multiple cas for an individual individual ticker um and then additionally one one of the features that adds you can probably touch on later on is like the, in addition to the token scanner we offer it's a, a fresh like a fresh launch pairs um it's still in its infancy so it just pulls the the latest ethereum tokens that have been launched but as it builds out, it'll allow users to filter by volume for burnt liquidity, uh, the top 24 tokens that have been trending over, or the top tokens that have been trending for the last 24 hours, or or specific times that they want to, to associate or to filter. And then that'll kind of weed out um, those those nefarious CAs and and pull up you know what actually is is in the spotlight or in the limelight at that present moment to, to add to their trackers, if that if that kind of clears that up or makes a little more sense. Oh, it definitely does. And I guess like with with each user having to go in and it being a, you know more user specific, as you mentioned, versus a uniform, um, how, how does that impact maybe like the the bandwidth or or does is that causing like a little bit extra congestion or like dead space? If, for example, like, a hundred people link the same ticker to the CA, but it's like the same one, but for each of them, it's, it's unique. Like, would there, like when I was asking about a more of like a form, like a standardized form, would you guys build out the ability where say, for example, the first person uh, goes in and links, you know, the, the ticker Astro X to you guys, then say user two comes in when they're going to link that ticker with the form in place, it can kind of give them the drop down menu. So when they're doing it, it's like, oh, we already have one Astro X in the system. Is it the same one? And then if they click yes, it's just easily implemented on their end through a click versus having to, to go through the process. Uh, it, it's going to save users time and may save even congestion in terms of how much data has to be stored in the back end of the system. Um, so I, I'm just, yeah, curious if that might be something that you guys look to scale out, if that's possible. I'm not, a, I wouldn't understand the coding or the back end side of it, um, but I'm definitely, I, I love data. Like that's, that's my, that's where I live. So. Yeah. I mean, uh, the, the way, the way, the way that you've spoke, sorry, Joe, you want to go on? Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. So, so the way that you've just spoke about it there, Maurice, we've actually not looked at it from that angle. So I think definitely we should take that into consideration. Um, 
and maybe at some point after the AMA, if we could discuss that a little bit more in, de in detail, because I think that particular idea 100%. and approach might might yeah, definitely jump be on a call this feasible to for sure. yeah to to see if that's something that we could speak to the developer about and look at implementing. Because obviously, you know, the, the reality is 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 with with data, especially as it grows, it can never be. 100 percent it's going to be you know it's, it's like for example with dex tools right you see the number of contract addresses that come up and at the beginning just before there's, there's a project that launches nobody really knows which one's the correct one right so i suppose we need to take some caution especially when it comes to to building out the, the data set further and with, with the tickets and what have you so yeah definitely we'd like to consider other approaches just to make sure that it's as safe as it possibly can be so that there's no mistakes for potential users using astro x and getting into the wrong trade because obviously the whole point of us being around is to make sure that people are getting into the right trades at the right times not the wrong trade at the right times exactly and yeah like we'll, we'll definitely jump on a call um something like that it, you know even from a, a user standpoint like I, I come from like the marketing and sales so we're talking about sales funnel well if it becomes a simple click uh, of a drop down versus like a, an actual submission of information, you're going to allow a lot more people to flow into the bot and start to utilize the tech as well, too, right? So there it, it is that always that that user growth benefit uh, of simplifying the process, and if it becomes verified, yeah, like there's there's a, a safety aspect too that that goes into play. Uh, and I know exactly what you're talking about when when you talk about the Dex tools. That bugs me when sometimes teams make a, I don't want to I don't say it's a mistake but sometimes teams make the mistake of preloading their contract in and people will buy it before and they buy the wrong one and then you get those people in the telegram for the one that was real fudding it and it just becomes a very uh, negative place to be yeah. so yeah like anything like that I i've been in those tokens i mean when i was new i accidentally bought one or two of them not knowing right like my first month or two being so new and you know trying to catch hype on a new launch so I've, I've been there. I've lived it, and it's definitely something you, uh, <laughs> if you can avoid for users, definitely, yeah, definitely, definitely helps. made a few of those mistakes as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think but that's yeah, well, pretty much nearly everybody in the industry. So the the other thing I wanted to go to, and and I wanted to again, I know you jumped into you know what you were talking about with regards to why you're here, and I can you know really get behind it. Uh, another thing that you guys are you know why you're here is because there's such a big gap, as I mentioned, from Web two to Web three, and in Web three ROI is it varies. You know, a lot of the times it's and again it's it's tough to gauge. Um, there's there's volume on a chart which is a little bit easier to read but the question i wanted to get to is how do you guys from an roi standpoint gauge the intangibles because i think that is for for influencers and stuff it's it's tough but if it's somebody taking money posting about you a couple of times and they bring some volume and that's kind of all they outline is what they're trying to do it's fine but if if you know you pay somebody and you know they bring some volume but then they also like you know, there's so many other ways they could they can add support, right? So, how do you guys m measure the intangibles, and weight that like when you're kind of creating your profiles about these KOLs or influencers or tracked accounts? I suppose when it if that essentially comes down to the amount of time and data that's been acquired for a specific influence or call. Um, so, one of the one of the features that we have implemented. Um, it, within the utilities for, for obviously Web3 Web at the moment. It's something called first mover analysis. Um, and what essentially this does, it's, it's able to see which influencers or calls have mentioned a particular ticker uh, in relation to the other mentions of that particular ticker. So for example, you have an influencer or call, they've mentioned Astro X. Uh, let's say 40 times, and then you've got another influence, a bunch of influencers and calls who have mentioned in total, in totality, uh, Astro X has been mentioned 1,000 times, right? So the bot will be able to show users which call mentioned it first in relation to the other calls. So, for example, influencer one mentioned it, you know, the second time out of 1,000 times it was used. Um, so when we, we, as time progresses, we can start to see which influences and calls are consistently making 
these right calls in terms of the trends and, and the projects uh, it's sooner in comparison to others so we can see which ones are setting the trends which ones are really good at identifying those projects that are eventually successful so for example if we've got an influencer and call who's always consistently calling projects within their early stages and 95 percent of those projects do really well we can now start to build a profile about that particular influencer call and say well this particular call is always calling the successful projects in their infancy before they reach the mainstream so we can see that potentially the, the, the next project that he calls in its infancy will most probably go in a similar direction and it'll probably do very well as well because we can see that that particular influencer or call has that experience of identifying the really good projects with really good use cases um, but again that's something that's going to come with time um, in terms of the web 2 that you've asked about the focus there it's going to be more it's going to be more centralized around trends and the impact that uh, web 2 influencers have on trends uh, so for example um, are they are they setting trends or are they calling trends uh, earlier than others uh, but with the web 2 it's going to be very different uh, we've got the idea and the concept there uh, but in terms of the specifics of how it's going to work that's going to take us some time to to really to really get into so we are focused on trying to perfect the web 3 first the web 2 we do plan to come to at some point once the web 3 is completely perfected uh, we just don't know exactly when that's going to happen it is expected at some point we don't know it could be in the next six months it could be in the next 12 months it really depends on how how quickly we can fast track things along uh, for the for the web three development. Uh, and I really like that uh, concept of first mover analysis that you guys are, are doing. Um, I don't know how many times because the the one thing you learn sometimes these bigger accounts, especially you know if you look at X. Um, who jump into projects at much higher market caps, or maybe don't even mention them early, and then and you know once they hit a certain level, I don't even know if they're supporting them or buying them, or if they're just talking about them a lot to engagement farm off what is you know a really good strong community that's growing, right? So, um, I know personally when I'm in projects, you know we hit certain market caps, and and you know they say, oh we got this guy on board this guy's gonna call us blah 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 i'm just like sitting there thinking to myself i'm like well if they they better not have paid this guy to, to call because if they did i'm gonna gotta i got now i gotta go check the marketing wallet because if they paid this guy i'm, I'm selling my bag like <laughs> they, they, you know he, and then that's just like again that that's something i know from being in the space and understanding the space but what you guys are doing is allowing kind of you know everyday people maybe even somebody who's new to kind of get to that that gut feeling like that level of information that you know somebody who's been in for for two and a half years like myself may know so yeah i kind of wanted i love that uh the, the fma that you guys are doing that's a really cool use case um and personally it will i think uh bring light to some I of think... these smaller accounts who don't get the reach don't get the recognition often can't monetize their profiles but are bringing much better value than some of these 100k plus who are charging $25,000 for a yeah. week or two weeks of support and maybe bring the reach but they bring absolutely no long-term value yeah. it's a quick essentially yeah. pump on volume but once they stop mentioning it their community sells off and you're laughed at yeah. square one with you know hopefully your taxes are good and at least some additional funds in the marketing wallet to make up for what you had to spend right so it's an unfortunate right. reality that a lot of projects when you're trying to scale get stuck in so yeah no like it's clear use case it's, it's, it's actually a problem in the space and you guys are trying to identify and fix it so i you know that's what you need with a utility it needs to solve a problem for it to, yeah. to make sense it's, it's interesting that you mentioned that about some of the smaller calls because i I, I know I, I'm, I know pretty well a small a very small time call. In fact, you know him as well, but I won't mention his name obviously on on your channel. Um, and he is very very good at finding some of those very early projects in their early stages just before they start to run. Like he's very good at assessing the utility. Utility is very good at assessing the team. He's very good at assessing their marketing plan. Um, and then you see that he, he's called them about ninety five to hundred percent of the time. They run very well. And how is it, you know, how can we, as AstroX, how can we give light to those particular calls, as you mentioned, 
to show that they are actually doing a very good job. They're very good at identifying uh, identifying projects early. They're very good at um, showing you which projects projects are going to do well, but they're not being given that 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 limelight, you know. So that's yeah, Astro X definitely helps in that area as well. Sure. Um, I know I kind of jumped in when we went into the you know the discussion about the the standardized form about the the CA and the ticker uh, submission. Uh, so I didn't mean to cut you off. I know you were kind of in the middle of uh, a role, so I don't know if you remember what you had to get to <laughs> next. It's been about 15 minutes, but I was going to say, I can't throw it back to you to kind of go back, you know, in the presentation style. But I always, like I said, if, if there's a, a question that's relevant to the topic at hand, I don't like to sit on it too long or sometimes we lose it. So um, that was a really good discussion. I appreciate you you kind of jumping in. and No, 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 that's that fine. That's me. fine. I mean, if, you, yeah. if you'd like, I can continue where I left off. Yeah, no, perfect. I'll go back. And like I said, if I have questions, I'll just throw my hand up and, and let you know. Super. Yeah. So, so as, as obviously you've heard, you know, as you now know, the, 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 the whole, the, the implementation of the token scanner with the alias allocation is what actually allowed us to develop the bot further to not only track the influences of calls, but to actually measure their impact. So not just from the mentioning of the tickers in relation to other calls and influencers, but actually measuring uh, their real impact on, on a project's market cap on the chart, the price and the volume. Um, so on top of actually being able to see if, you know, influencers or calls are actually having an impact on, on the project, uh, we and that's done by snapshots of the chart. Once the ticker is mentioned by a particular influencer or call, uh, I think the interval time intervals now are something like 15 minutes followed by one hour followed by four hours. Uh, that's at the moment. Uh, there are plans in the very near future to build those time intervals out further uh, to allow people to assess um, the, 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 you know, the, the after a tick has been mentioned after a, a day or after a month or after a week or after a few months and what have you, and then allowing actually custom time parameters as well. Um, so all of these influences and calls, they're added to something called the Astro X Influencer Score and Rank. And what that essentially is, it's where the influences and calls are ranked on a system based on the actual impact that they have on projects, ranking, you know, the best performing influencer, i.e. which one has the most impact on projects and their market cap as a number one, uh, followed by the next best, followed by the next best, so, and so on and so forth, uh, with every account being ranked in order according to their impact. So then you have first place, second place, third place, all the way down through to last place. Um, so yeah, that's kind of touching on those core, uh, the, the core features. Now, in terms of, you know, in terms of the use cases for Astro X, obviously, we, we, we all know now that traders can use that. And we obviously know that at some point when we do transition into Web2, businesses will be able to use that as well. Uh, but one of the most important use cases uh, that we will actively begin targeting as the data set expands out and after some of the uh, after some of the rebuilding is finished and we've added some of the extra features uh, one of those features uh, we'll discuss in a moment called the influencer the, the the influencer groups one of the user profiles is project owners uh, so essentially a project can come along um, and immediately they'll be able to assess uh, with the global score and rank feature uh, and the global statistics, they'll immediately be able to assess which callers are actually having the be best impact on projects in general, uh, so that they can actually cherry pick uh, the right callers and the right influencers and calls uh, to spend their marketing wallet funds on, uh, as opposed to those influencers and calls who don't necessarily seem to have uh, as much impact. Um, and it's it, it, one of the other benefits as well is that they'll be able to see which influencers and calls are good at calling trends earlier as opposed to others so that they can kind of get in touch with those influencers and calls and find out what they can do to make sure that they're aligning their project with the expectations of those particular calls who are good at calling trends early to make sure that they're checking all of those boxes to essentially go for one of those runs as well and follow the other projects that are doing so well. And and that um, like that, uh, I love that that value to projects too, right? So like, you're kind of giving them essentially the the blueprint 
for other teams that you know maybe be in the same sector or similar base utility maybe it's meme coin maybe you know whatever it may be you're kind of setting that blueprint for them and and giving them almost a shortcut to identify you know what worked and what didn't and again it yeah. may not have yeah. the same impact because each project each community is different but you're setting the blueprint and that i mean a lot of people know like the the it's tough to put into words, but it's it's invaluable sometimes how much that experience can mean because you will throw sometimes 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars in a learning experience, and that's costly if it's a mix, especially if it's a mix between project funds via tax and out of pocket, right? Like then investors can be mad, you're a little bit upset, everybody kind of loses in that situation. And you know, the whole goal of I think this space is for for everybody to win together. So um yeah it's great and it's a ton of value to, to projects now how do you guys as astro x like monetize or benefit from getting more and more projects like incubated or partnered with you like using the tech like what's the benefit now to astro x or the or the token holders okay so at the moment project owners would come along just as traders come along as individual users uh, who would then be able to use? Uh, so we have we have a tiered system for for the AstroX utility, right? I think there's about five tiers in total at the moment. Uh, there's the free tier, which allows for one tracked account and uh, one tracked X account and one tracked Ethereum wallet. Um, it, it doesn't give access, you know, sadly, to some of the global statistics and the influencer score and rank system and what have you. Uh, but then the other tiers do kind of, as, as you progress along the tiers, they start to give more and more access to the utility. So we've got the, I think there's the bronze tier, followed by the silver tier, followed by the gold and the platinum, and then finally diamond. And then with each of those, the number of tracked accounts that you can follow increases to eventually the diamond tier, which gives you unlimited accounts, uh, unlimited access to all of the global statistics and the influencer uh, statistics and the global rank feature and what have you. Uh, so yeah, projects would come along in a very similar way. Uh, initially, they would have to, if they wanted to access uh, some of those larger data sets and some of those particular data sets that are relevant to them, they would need to hold uh, for the diamond tier, it's 10 million tokens at the moment, 10 million Astro X tokens to access the diamond tier. Uh, and that would then be relevant to for, for, for their particular use cases. Now, obviously, that's going to do two things. The first thing that's going to do as more, as more and more project owners come as individuals to use the particular utility, um, that's obviously going to have an impact on the chart because obviously they'll have to buy tokens uh, as they as more and more projects come to buy tokens to get access to the utility. That's, that's going to increase the value of Astro X long term. Um, there are other ways that we work with projects as well. well. Sorry, there is a subscription model in place as well. Uh, for those who don't particularly want to buy the Astro X tokens, uh, or for that, once we get to a stage where it becomes a little bit expensive uh, to, to buy 10 million Astro X tokens in order to access the diamond tier, we have uh, the subscription model in Ethereum, uh, which is 0 0.1 ETH per month. And that gives access uh, to the diamond tier for the unlimited statistics and what have you as well. So projects can come along and do that along with along with traders. Um, there are other ways that we intend to work with project owners. Uh, and what we're building at the moment, it was initially the ETA for this particular feature was like three, four months ago. But as we mentioned, we had a problem with the first dev and his health and what have you. And we were in a pickle for several months until we found the the, the new dev who's managed to uh, focus on rebuilding the bot completely uh, we have the existing bot which is live and we have the one that's being rebuilt uh, which is now in the beta phase it's in the test phase and it's currently being tested by by some of the whales we have a whale chat as well sorry by the way for, for our diamond tier holders which was just started a few days ago um so we did have a uh, we did plan we, it was built uh it's something called the astro x uh nothing like it before shield um and this is where the astro it's a shield not like any other shield it's been integrated with the x api uh, which allows for certain types of data to be pulled uh with regards sorry joel would you mind touching on the astro x shield please because you you're a lot more 
uh, acquainted with some of the the specifics of the data acquisition. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, so just some um, some background with the with the existing bot, you're able to add the rules for false or track accounts into groups and channels. So it actually sends the notifications uh, real time for the tweets to those channels. Uh, what the Astro X Shield does is it allows you to to forward those tweets to your channels that it's implemented in. And it works similar to how our bot does now. Um, as you shield a tweet, it it tracks, you know, some of the other shields, it tracks the, the likes, comments, retweets, bookmarks, and, and whatnot. But what it does is it takes a snapshot of, of now we focus more on, on the users in that group, and it takes a snapshot of, of who is engaged with that tweet and who is getting the most engagement on whether they're retweeting it or quote retweeting it or or just or liking it and how many likes they've received on on their shares so it actually starts to not necessarily hold your hold the the group users accountable but it shows you who's really working for for their bags if you will uh, you know as they say um and you can use that for not only the user in your group but you can set it up for specifically influencers that you have or if you're paying raiders to to engage tweets or whatnot then it actually track it'll track those individuals and and how hard they're working so you can really you know hold them accountable just like we're we're looking to hold influencers accountable with our main bot that, that's um like now how unfortunately you know sometimes people don't love getting called out about this so you know some some negativity from maybe the the lower performing uh, communities uh, could come up so like how do you guys <laughs> manage that right because you're not doing it to be negative and, and i always say like listen don't get mad at me get mad at the numbers like it, numbers don't lie unfortunately so um and like how do you just like mitigate or just let communities know that may show up in the bottom half like it's not anything against you that's just how you guys rank based on the data and maybe even try and work with some of those communities who have shown an interest in your tool to get them higher up like you know improve their score work with them what maybe they're not doing well that the other accounts are doing right so then you guys become in, inherently um, not only a source of information but you guys can be a, a way to help maybe some of those lower performing ones see what they need to do to close the gap to, to get there if they they really do seem you know positive and passionate about what they're doing uh, i have to make a quick aside the ones who are just yelling at you i wouldn't say help them but the ones who are like hey man i noticed we we're ranking pretty low kind of sucks like i'm out here grinding like is there anything i may be missing that that you can help me with like that's a, a good potential partner to have longer term if they can turn it around i mean i suppose in those particular sorry go on joel go ahead uh, no, I was just going to say that that's a, a great point. And um, one of the things that, you know, we do because, you know, positivity matters and, and we don't want to to shun or, or negate anyone's effort is that the point system that that we we offer, uh, they don't it doesn't take away points. So you're not going in the negative. So so no one is. So it doesn't make anyone look bad in that sense. Uh, but rather, you know, if you have more effects, then you get more points. So, so no one's in negative points. Just some people get more points for for their their actions. And I suppose, Maurice, you know, it. I, I mean, I suppose the the, re, the reality. I mean, we could always speak to you know, every, every time that we have our, you know, obviously it's not the main bot. We're going away from the main utility, but every time we have the Astroic Shield added to a project owner's community channel then i suppose we could speak to that project owner and say there is going to be potentially community members who fall at the lower half of the scoreboard um, and it might be nice to kind of reach out to them or just let them know you know generally as a community that those of you who are scoring lower points it doesn't mean anything bad against you particularly um, and if you need any support on how you can actually increase your score, maybe reach out to those guys who are scoring a little bit higher, right? Um, I mean, I suppose that's the best that you can do to kind of mitigate um, the potential backlash that there could be from some of those community members who don't necessarily have as much impact. Uh, but I, I mean, I suppose the reality is, is that, you know, the, the, be, being in the world that we're in, it's impossible to please everybody, right? You're going to have some people who are just 
going to be very happy with what you're doing and what you've built out. You're going to have some who aren't, right? I mean, definitely I can say that for, for, the, for the main bot, you know, for the main utility that we have, which is tracking the influencers and calls and, and holding influencers and calls to account, especially over the long-term period as the data builds out, seeing which ones are having impact and which ones aren't having impact. I suppose as Astro works, we'll definitely get some backlash from some of those influencers and calls that the utility is saying isn't necessarily having much of an impact, right? Um, as much as we, we, we get backlash from them, I suppose we could reach out to them and say, hey, maybe there's something that we can do to help you with your strategy or maybe we can give you some advice or point you in the right direction and connect you with some of those calls who do have an impact and see if they can help you improve your strategy. Uh, but I suppose we're always going to have some of them who just aren't happy with the fact that we're kind of essentially tarnishing their reputation, right? Well, it's not so much we're tarnishing their reputation, but it's more that the utility and the data speaks for itself you know, it's it's that it, there's there's going to be some people who aren't happy. Uh, we can try our best to mitigate that, uh, but essentially, we're looking at the global picture, right? We're looking at the the, the we're looking at the greater good um, over the, the 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 few individuals who might not be too content with what we're doing. And the greater good is that overall, we're trying our best to make sure that the vast majority of traders are improving their profitability, they're reducing their risks, they're following the right trades and the right calls. And, and for project owners to reduce uh, their, their, their unnecessary spending and to improve their ROI, um, and that's what the, that, that's essentially the, the, the greater purpose. And um, if we do step on a few toes, unfortunately along the way, which we don't intend to, but it will happen if it's a crowded place, um, then we just do our best to make sure that we, we we kind of let them know that we're not actually targeting you. It's just the data that speaks for itself, and and that's just the reality of the jungle. And I, I understand that, right? Like, um, you know, I had somebody kind of, you know, come at us a little bit this week that, that Caesar had, had called out and, um, you know, he got all up in my DMs and I just had to explain to him, like, listen, man, like, it, it's not anything against you. It's just this is what we've been showing. This is what we've seen. Like, unfortunately, the blockchain doesn't lie. And then, you know, he kind of was like, ah, shit, well, okay. Just still, man, it doesn't need to be saying. He, and I was like, so you just want us to know that you guys are trying to like kind of scam people and have launched like four or five other projects in three, four months. And just like, you want us to know that and just not say anything about it. Cause that's good. I'm like, I was like, dude, I just, just no. I was like, just, you know, why'd you even bother DMing me? Cause like, that just makes me think like what he's saying is now even more accurate. The fact that you're just saying, yeah, well, don't, yeah. don't shine any yeah. light on it, man. Just like, let it go. I'm like, well, I'm not a let it go kind of kind of guy, unfortunately. Yeah, that's right. So, I mean, and I suppose you guys, you've stepped on his or her toes, but you've saved how many other people from potentially falling into, into a very horrible trap, right? And that's going to be the same with us. You know, we know that there's influencers and calls out there who use botted accounts, right? They have... You know, they, they might set up a call or they might set up, you know, w whatever it is, uh, whether it's an AMA and there's, there's botted accounts that are messaging, there's botted accounts which are listening in and it makes it look like that they're very busy. They've got botted followers and uh, and it makes it look like they're really, you know, the, 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 the creme de la creme in the industry, right? And so it's important that these particular individuals, and I'll say malicious because it's malicious to, to, to make yourself appear to be something that you're not right you're using bots and what have you to make it look like you can have impact on the project but really you can't right and i suppose it's important to kind of expose these kind of individuals and that's where astro x does help because it will expose them because the data again doesn't lie are they having are they having an impact on on a project's market cap are they having an impact on volume are they good at calling projects in their early stages and if they are i mean if if, if they aren't what, why do they have 100,000 followers? Why do they have 300 people messaging in the TG, LFG, to the moon, what have you, and, 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 and everything else that comes with, with, with the botted accounts, right? So, yeah. thousand, thousand percent can agree more. Now, um, it's, you know, from a, from a, I guess, barrier to entry standpoint, there's no, it's all free to use, and you guys, will be 
keeping it that way like in the future i, I would assume but again if there's maybe additional t- tiered features that come into play based on holding or token amounts uh, that's a bit of a different story but just base level entry initial usage there's not going to be any restrictions for 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 people coming in which you know obviously allows for a lot mm. more scalability no so so the, the the very basic use of the utility uh which which allows people to come and and to kind of get a feel for the utility to test it and, and what have you, that's always going to be free uh, because we want to leave that door open that allows people to come and test it to see if it's something that they could potentially use um, to kind of improve their, their trading strategy. So we wouldn't want to close the door entirely. That's always going to be open, whether it's six months down the line, 12 months down the line, 18 months down the line, which that's always going to be the case. Um, the same will be for the web UI interface. You know, the the, the Think Google Analytics, but but for X Trend Analytics, which will which we're building out. It should hopefully the ETA for that. Um, I'm going to say towards the last third or the last ten days of April. It could be sooner, um, but that's going to be the same. There'll be the tier system. There'll be the free the very the free tier at the basic level, which allows people to do the very basics like following and tracking one account and some of the very basic data. So that door is always going to be open uh, for people to come and use it. And obviously, if they see the potential, um, and obviously once they've discussed with other community members and, and ourselves, and they can see the potential, and we'll be sharing screenshots and, and what have you of some of the, the some of the kind of data that can be pulled with with the higher tiers. Once they see the potential, then they've obviously got the option to kind of go for maybe one of the other tiers where they have to hold a certain number of Astro X tokens. Or they can go for the other option, which is to pay 0.1 ETH per month as a subscription fee for the highest tier. And obviously, all of the the, the revenue earned from that is fed directly into the revenue pool. uh, And that's 100% rev share for the holders of AstroX. Okay. Now... Is there going to be like from a, a threshold percentage? Is it going to be something that's done like weekly, like for the for the revenue side? Is it going to be like a weekly thing, monthly, or is it going to be like as you know X amount is accrued through the the streams? Once we hit you know whatever X is, that gets distributed. Like just trying to figure out exactly like more the scheduling side of it. Joel would be best to answer that particular question with regards to the rev share. Joel, you want to jump in, mate? Yep, yep. So right now with the existing uh, contract we have, uh, it gets added manually. Um, there's a two-week uh, lock period for stake tokens. Uh, however, as we roll out uh, the updates, we'll be introducing a new staking contract that will actually auto-feed all those all the rev share revenues uh, into the contract, and it will be auto claim. So it won't be, it won't have to get it manually added by the team. It'll come in as it, as it, as it's received. And so it'll allow users to, to get their, their rev share. Uh, as long as they meet that two week uh, staking period, they'll be able to claim it, uh, compound it or, or in variations of that. No, no, I appreciate you. That's it's definitely that uh, the staking lock per, like uh, period is, is good to know. Um, now, you know, based on the share, is it is it percentage of staked or is it percentage of token held in your wallet in general? Are you paid out based on yeah, just how much you've staked and locked, or is it paid uh, based on how much you're holding? Um, and just to note, along with that, you know, when when users actually stake their tokens, they don't they don't lose access to the bot. So so whatever amount you've staked, if you've staked all of it, then you still maintain that tier, even though it's not in your wallet. It's really good to know because I've seen a few utility projects in the past roll it out where if you have to use or burn a certain amount of tokens, like you've, I've seen people slide out of certain tiers or into, you know, lower um, functionality brackets. And it's like, oh, well, that's almost like shooting yourself in the foot as a project when people actually like and want to use you. So really smart that you guys kind of identified that and are, are not having, um, you know, not hurting users that are actually looking to support you kind of longer term. I have a, a few um, different questions here in terms of access. Now, what are you guys looking to build out? And, you know, is there going to be like a more of a centralized hub that you guys are going to put together just because the a lot of the, you know, the language, 
the terminology that is used on the website and looking at the project, it kind of, I'm not going to say Bloomberg, but more of a dashboard or a trading terminal style feel um, that tracks analytics, but also allows you to have the, the trading aspect. So like, where do you see this kind of growing to in terms of like more of a dashboard or an end user experience to, to get everything kind of under one roof? Yeah, so so we we understood that obviously you know Telegram, it's got it's got two limitations, right? The one limitation is that there's only so many there's only so much customization that you can have with Telegram in terms of the data uh, that you can have. It's it, it's Telegram, right? It's it's not it's not a dashboard, it's not Google Analytics, it's not a web app. Um, so it's very limited in in terms of that that aspect. The second problem, obviously, we've noticed or we, we, we're very aware of, is that Telegram, you, the, the Telegram users uh, from from obviously the crypto space. Yet a lot of us are using Telegram, but there's a huge demographic of crypto users who aren't using Telegram, um, especially when it comes to some of those new or novice investors, or even if they've been around for a while but they're not very familiar with you know, decentralized exchanges and they spend most of their time for the most part on centralized exchanges, whether it's been for the last year or two years and they don't even possess a wallet and, and things like that. They're not normally on Telegram. And I, I, I know so many crypto traders like that. They use centralized exchange. They don't know how to use a wallet. They don't know how to use a decentralized exchange. They're not familiar with Telegram being a huge, you know, hub of information when it comes to crypto and they're quite fixated on using x you know as as their main place for information and stock tweets and and using you know kraken and using coinbase and what have you for their trading right so we did we did consider that 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 particular demographic of these novice kind even if they've been around for a long time novice kind of investors and traders it's quite huge there's there's a huge amount of them right so we did think about the obviously that's the the, the, ne the next major milestone is actually targeting those particular individuals with a dashboard with obviously the web ui interface and that obviously allows some of the more advanced traders and you know veteran traders such as yourselves and, and the ones listening to be able to come and and kind of look at the data in more detail and kind of have their own custom data parameters and really pull da data and, and visualize it a lot better than what they normally would on Telegram, right? It's a lot different. It's a lot more advanced. It allows them to to have have their own parameters and what have you. Um, and it's going to allow the same for some of those novice traders to come along and 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 really start to see things and visualize things a lot better than what they would if they just jumped onto a Telegram bot which they've never used before in their life. Um, so that's the first thing. Yes. So in terms of you know targeting the the, the wider audience, wider audience, and making it easier for people to understand data. Um, the next plan after that, once the web UI interface is ready and it's rolled out, is to actually make uh, the the utility in general, so the Telegram bot and the web UI interface. You know, just just to obviously make it clear that the both the web UI interface and the Telegram bot would be using the same data set. So everything is synchronized across both platforms. There wouldn't be any differences in the data or any any uh, any issues there. It's to now make both platforms and the utility as a whole, the dashboard and the Telegram bot available for, for other languages, uh, for other demographics, because obviously we know crypto is quite big in China and it's quite big in Indonesia and Turkey and what have you. Um, so initially, uh, the plan is to roll out the utility to make it available in French, uh, followed by German and Dutch, and followed by Spanish and Italian, possibly Portuguese, uh, and then by some of the major market la market languages such as Chinese, uh, and then Turkish, and then Malay, and finally Arabic. And we the expected ETA for all of the languages to be rolled out. We're hoping by the end of May, um, the end of May. Now, you might think that's a little bit ambitious. It, we would have said that's very ambitious and probably unrealistic if we had the old dev. Uh, but the new dev is uh, has proven to be extremely, um, ex, 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 well, he's, he's, he's very good. Let's just say he's, he's very good. Uh, and he's, he's doing a lot of things in such a short space of time. So now, realistically, we could have 
all of the languages rolled out by the end of May. Um, so that's in terms of targeting the wider crypto audience and just making it easier for crypto users in general to be able to see the data and to have it accessible in their own languages as well. I hope that covers the question, Reese. Yeah, it does. And I know you had touched on that as well, even in in the space in terms of some of the stuff that's upcoming, which is, uh, you know, different inclusion initiatives, like adding in, in multiple languages, uh, I think focused on on a number of different kind of languages, primarily spoken in the EU. And then you're, you're also looking to go uh, more globally focused in, in the future as well. So, um, no, I appreciate that. Now, you know, also like, I, I touched on the sales funnel stuff earlier, but it relates to like why building up a hub or something like that for you guys as, as a brand is really helpful in the future, right? If you have one place to point them to, you're going to have less, uh, you know, drop off rates as they go through multiple landing pages. So, um, yeah, no, sweet. Uh, really, again, I'm a big fan of See the you. use case for this one. Um, I think there's a lot of potential so, yeah. as more brands come into. So just, just following on from that point that you just mentioned about it being a hub, um it, it's probably something really important that i didn't mention it's one of the features um that is currently available within the the utility and that's giving users the opportunity to snipe um to snipe a contract address from within the same utility or to actually snipe on tweet uh, so say for example there is a ticker that's been associated with the contract address uh, and then a trapped account mentions that ticker uh, with the bot, as soon as that notification comes through with the ticker, there's a button which would allow you to actually snipe uh, that ticker or contract address um, with, with, with a single click. Um, it's still at its very basic level at the moment, but we are looking to build out the sniper to kind of be on the same level as Maestro. Um, it's not necessarily going to be exactly the same because obviously it's part of a wider utility, but to at least be on the same level in terms of the different parameters and settings that people can have uh, and in terms of its efficiency as well that it's also uh, we're also looking to have that particular feature integrated into the web ui interface into the dashboard um, how that will be done we still need to discuss but uh, you know with coding anything is possible um, that being said i do kind of want to mention something that we haven't we've mentioned it in our community but we haven't kind of gone public with it but it is something that we want to work towards and what that is it's it's the possibility of acquiring um i mean th there is going to be like you know multi uh multi wallet management available as well within the utility because uh of the the snipe feature so once that built once that's built out we can kind of work on that um, but we want to, you know, we wanted to mention the possibility of actually acquiring Astro X and not just Astro X, but potentially other, um, potentially other tokens as well in fiat currency. Um, now, the, the reason we want to do that, the reason we want to make it available, I mean, obviously we looked into things like flus and what have you, but there were some limitations. The reason we want to make that available or the reason why it's so important is because there's approximately 450 million crypto users worldwide and obviously a huge proportion of them like mentioned like we mentioned before they don't own a wallet they don't know how to use a decentralized exchange and they don't have access to decentralized assets such as astro x and so what we decided to do is that to kind of make the dashboard and the utility of astro x a lot more accessible to the wider audience and to allow them to buy astro x and access uh, the utility and the features um even though if even though they're not familiar with decentralized exchange or how to purchase decentralized assets is that we're looking to create uh, a a web two to web three kind of streamlined login procedure uh which will allow the crypto users to buy astro x with fiat currency it would allow them to do it with their email addresses it would allow them to access the utility with a one-click login by logging in with their Google account or their Facebook account and what have you. So we're really looking to kind of connect uh, Web 2 to Web 3 when we do get, get to that point, finishing the, the, the dashboard and, and what have you. Um, it's also going to allow users in general, so not just the novices, but obviously some of the, the, you know, the veteran traders, allow them to connect their email uh, to their Web 3 holdings or their Web 3 wallet uh, for verification of their holdings and, and connecting the wallets in general 
It will allow them to view their holdings via the email address login on the web UI. It would allow them to buy and sell Astro X, you know, with all swapping and slippage integrated into the back end, again, from the web UI or connected with their email. Um, and obviously the, the, the trading aspect directly available from the web UI. So for example, when notifications come through, allowing them to actually not just use the Telegram bot, but to trade from the web UI interface as well. Obviously, there's not a, an ETA for this particular feature, um, which is it's a, such a huge feature, but it is going to be implemented at some point once we've perfected the, the dashboard. So now, um, I had a really, I kind of had a thought earlier in the AMA, and then I was reading through the comment section as I, I kind of put that little fun Twitter contest uh, up, up for the apes to participate. We always just try and have fun. And the, the AMAs on Friday do a little bit, you know, something different, something extra for them. But I was reading through the comments and there's a question I liked, which was, will you guys be looking to implement a system that links uh KOLs or influencers wallets that they, they take payment for promotions on to the, the data side so that it would essentially flag the system if a post goes up that received a payment versus maybe a post goes up that's more organic or culture call type thing so then you know people can be a little more mindful watching those influencers knowing okay are their paid calls good or are their paid calls sellouts but you know their 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 culture calls are phenomenal which makes them able to like you know kind of sell out a little bit on their paid calls like i i had the same thought and i you know it was crypto koi was the username in the in the in the comment section that that threw this out there and i'm um, definitely something that i kind of thought of myself because yeah really good to know and i always say here like you know you know amas and calls majority of what we post are, are paid so you don't have to really worry um about that and you know we still do our due diligence vetting them that doesn't change so yeah i mean i mean i mean the great thing about the astro x team is that we're very very open to suggestion and if we haven't thought of something we are not going to think of everything right if, if you guys or any of your community members they think of something and it's something that's can, that's very feasible and that obviously sounds like something that's very feasible to include then yeah we'll definitely look into it consider it and and speak if you can get him to join us in the telegram uh in the astro x telegram and get him to reach out to us and we can definitely have a discussion with him and get some more details and insight onto actually what the some of the specifics of how he how he expects it to work and then kind of go from there if we if we, if we present it to the dev and he says it's something that can be done then yeah definitely we can go through with it no reason we wouldn't. And um, again, not everybody would want to participate in that program because it, it would require, you know, uh, those influencers or calls or whoever, you know, uh, content creators, whatever it may be, whatever the brand or partner is working with it as, you know, the use case expands. Um, it would require them essentially doxing their wallet, which puts a lot of, I think, positive responsibility or ownership if they choose to go that route. but yeah that's why a lot of people won't go that that you know route in you know it's in, in my opinion i think it would be a positive sentiment for anybody who chooses and i know caesar's always kind of said um you know with him in the space like my wallets are all docs like i get front run all the time like you guys kind of know what i'm buying and selling so like nobody can give me shit about anything because it's it's all public knowledge and i think that's one of the reasons why people have kind of you know we've been able to stay around for almost three years now yeah, I support. Yeah, I mean, I, I I didn't know that about you guys at all. I did not know that Caesar has his wallets docs. But if that if that's the case, then yeah, there's a reason why you guys are so popular and why you guys have such a good name in the space, right? It's because you guys are very transparent. You're letting people know exactly what you're doing and the moves that you make, and that has a massive impact on 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 traders. It's 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 huge value. It's 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 it yeah, builds the trust. Joke is, uh, the running joke is buy, you know, Caesar's a great buy signal in the sense that he buys some really good plays. Just don't like trade like him because he holds stuff too long. You know, he doesn't, you know, if you're strictly talking trading, you know, we do more of a support. So sometimes he buys a play just with no intention of selling it because he hopes that, you know, if he buys in and holds a good floor, maybe maybe the community and the and the team can push it to some new heights and, and you know, everybody wins in that situation, right? So 
um yeah it's uh it's it's unique and i've seen them get i mean the public has seen them get wrecked on like bags that have gone from one eth to 82 eth back down to 0.1 eth and he never took profit and yeah it's a public record it's funny i always say trade buy like caesar don't trade like caesar and you'll be very well in this space i'll keep that in mind <laughs> yeah no uh, but no great utility and again it's it's uh the people who take those steps when we're talking inclusion it shows like the right attitude from communities and if you're a new person who's in you know maybe used to you know tradfi or you know traditional investing and then you come into crypto and you, you know the anonymity of the space is you know one of the big concerns for a lot of people well that type of information being given up like those would likely be the types of people that those new people would gravitate towards so like that just you know strengthens the, the use case for you guys and what you're trying to do is keep kind of newer people having a good experience so yeah no great question koi um thank you for for sending that through kind of you know had a similar thought and it, it would really make sense as they scale if that could be something worked in and that's the nice thing about the blockchain is everything's kind of out there it's just you got to be able to integrate it right that's and that takes time it does yeah it takes time and it's it's it takes and and I, I suppose that's one of the things that we've kind of it's the, the crypto space it's not like the web two space right it's very people expect rome to be built in a day you know that's a sad reality in the crypto industry but i suppose one of the things that we've focused on as astro x as a community is we've really fostered the community for long-term growth and to be long-term holders and to understand that there's a long-term vision um this is not some pump and dump project you know this is not some project where we just want to go to the moon in, in the first day or two days no we're here for progressive growth we're here we we're, we're preparing ourselves for the bear market that could come in 18 months or two years right that's one of the reasons why we want to transition into the web 2 market as well because we want to make sure that when that time comes when the bear market potentially hits at the end of 2025 or possibly before or possibly after we need to make sure that the, the business model has other methods uh, of generating revenue in place. We need to make sure that we have other revenue streams in place, whether it's from Web 2 or the various other aspects of Web 3. We need to make sure that we've got something consistent to keep the project and to keep the business model alive, right? So the vision is long term, and that's what we're here to do. We're here to stay. Do we here to stay here for the next five, 10 years for as long as the crypto industry is around? And, you know, for as long as the Web2 industry is around, which we hope will always be for a long time, then yeah, yeah that's what we're here. We're here to, to really make this a long term, long term project. Love it. And and again, I think, uh, you know, even just looking at the fact that you guys back all the way in October, right? Sometimes migrations are not easy. Uh, the fact that you guys went through the process to migrate and then have been alive almost six months since, like, you, you know, you should be able to tell if you're just looking from the outside in um, that, that you guys want to be here because it's not an easy process to go through a migration. And it was done from a, um, you know, a mindset of it, it's going to help and improve the project over longer term and, and allow us to kind of scale the, the back end and give more um more data in a better time frame like joel alluded to early on with you know how you guys were utilizing the x api at the time although you you did mention um you guys are kind of scaling a little bit away to a more cost effective model that's going to give more bandwidth and you know kind of utilize the funds uh that, that maybe you're saving elsewhere so oh man a lot of a lot of good stuff to to unpack here today i mean i, I do try and keep it high level and um as i mentioned to you yesterday like the the nice thing about these utility showcases and and how i like to use them to to keep in touch and really get updates from some of our longer term partners or you know anytime you guys have like a bigger um, announcement or, or a big update a rollout that you guys are just trying to look some some additional traction on you know hit me up um you know we could always get you on an additional space to keep you know the apes as well as some of those additional communities up to date and yeah, I love the continuity uh, of the spaces, and you know, I think what you guys are doing, there, there's definitely a per like a, a purpose for it. You know, you're solving a problem. You're you're trying to help newer people stay safe. Um, I always say for utility. Yeah, I mean, even the the larger stuff like launch pads and stuff out there that I've really liked and worked with. You need at least six to twelve months 
to really start to, to grow branding, grow brand awareness, start to get volume, start to get a user base to grow. Like that's where you start to see the big traction happen on, on utility projects is that six to 12 month ballpark. And you guys aren't even at the six month time frame yet. So definitely some impressive numbers early on. Uh, and you alluded to it. It's it's still a small sample size of data. And as you guys get more access and more data integrated, you can start making, um, you know, start recognizing patterns and, and everything. Yeah, as I, as I said earlier, I, I love data. I'm very nerdy um, when it comes to my data. So uh, I can't wait to see how you guys continue to scale this out because uh, it's really it's really needed, man. And we we I didn't want to go too deep into Web two because I, I know as you mentioned early that's that's very future focused but i think from like the uh, different platforms like you know you're just on x right now and you're focused on ethereum specifically for the wallet side but we didn't even go into like what happens if you guys bring soul uh solana or bsc or maybe one of these newer chains that comes in that has a big pub like what happens if you integrate them in and start to capitalize on that audience and that volume and that exposure um and then you know we didn't even talk about and this was something that that buck brought up in the space and and i think there's a, a big use case on this platform which is something like TikTok, right with how a lot of their um their their creators or, or influencers there are making uh content and uh, you know i think for what you guys do and the fact that a lot of brands will go to something like TikTok um in the future for that like viral viral type of marketing you guys could be a really good kind of uh, tool to leverage in terms of ROI. So again, we didn't get too deep into it, but it, it's that excitement, it's that potential, you know, future use cases that I think you need to see uh, for projects to get you excited. So, um, you know, any final calls to action, you know, anything we miss, anything else you wanted to leave us with, you know, more future focused here, uh, definitely don't hesitate to do so. But uh, I, I definitely know we're going to be be chatting in the future. And as I said, we can jump on a call even tomorrow uh, if you wanted to go over a little bit more about what I touched on with uh, the profiles and stuff. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'd like to do that. If, uh, you know, if me, you and Joel can have a chat tomorrow sometime. Probably around seven, uh, probably about seven thirty to eight thir eight p.m. You'd see around about the same time if you're well, available. After you, you, you know, great. you're able to get some food in you. Definitely want to make yeah, sure yeah. you got the, <laughs> the energy levels up, and you know, get those ideas bouncing bouncing off one another. So, yeah, we'll, we'll chat. Oh, actually, sorry, I, I, I did forget to mention something that's quite important. So, uh, yeah, go ahead. Because go ahead. obviously, yeah, because obviously we had some issues with the old development, as as mentioned, um, and then we got the new the new developer team and the new developers doing an amazing job. Um, and obviously he spotted some of the issues with the X API and now we're transitioning away from the X API and we're transitioning to using uh, another, another form of, of API. We now, we will now be adding a feature that was not present before and it sh should be going live soon. And that's where tracked, you will get notifications of a tracked account when they follow a new account. Now, why that's important is because if you're, for example, you're tracking a very huge call or a call who's well known for, for, for spotting good projects, the moment that they start following a project, you know immediately that that's a potential alpha uh, that's, that's been spotted by this particular call. I need to quickly go and check it out. Now, obviously on X, you might miss that, but if you've got the tailored notifications, you'll get that through the bot and you know now uh, who who that particular call is following or which project that call is following. So yeah, that's a new feature that's going to be introduced and hopefully launched and released possibly in the next two to four weeks. Um, yeah, just thought I'd throw that in. Um, these alerts, like where would they be coming directly through the bot or would they be coming directly to your your social? Um, like Like a push notification would like, if you if you so have they any come, notifications on like a you know an influencer you follow on Twitter or something. Yeah, so they come through the, the Telegram bot uh, and then you can set up the notifications on Telegram so that you would just receive the notifications from the bot. Uh, we actually have users uh, who had this set up um, and they were able to enter trades that they wouldn't have normally entered. Uh, and they were able they were able to get profit from this particular setup by setting up the telegram bot to 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 give them the push notifications uh, and additionally we we had one user uh, who was able thanks to 
uh, the Astro X Telegram bot and the notifications, he was able to get out of a rug pull just before it rugged. Had he not used the Telegram bot, had he not used Astro X, he wouldn't have got out of the rug pull and he would have lost a, a substantial amount of money. Perfect. No, that definitely answers uh, my question. And yeah, push notifications are big from a, a user friendly standpoint. I mean, even for myself, I, I keep most groups and most things muted otherwise my phone would would vibrate itself uh, off the table and probably have no battery left by like halfway through the day but um yeah i always make sure i have my notifications on for a couple different channels you know for caesar for buck for like my my contacts in the space that like you know if anything's super urgent i have to make sure i'm, I'm there to answer so I love that feature and yeah, it, it's, it's again, something that is traditional to web two. And if you guys are doing that, the, the user experience, as you guys try and onboard newer people and you know, give them that enjoyable first step, uh, will just get better. So it, it does align with like your, your ultimate like goal that you laid out for us, uh, earlier on in the AMA. Yeah. That's And that's just to make it a safest place, safer place for traders. Yeah. So that they can start experiencing more profitable trades getting into the right trades earlier as opposed to degening and aping and just losing one no it's uh it's funny because like you know even caesar i think he first started the the channel here caesar's calls because i thought it was a smart branding choice when he first told me because he he would always see the word ape everywhere and he was just like ape ape and he's like well i love planet of the apes that's my favorite ape so you know, when I scale out my, my channel, my brand, I think this is what I'm going to make it. So, yeah, no, I think uh, that term in crypto is 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 very popular and very famous. And, and yeah, I think it's got a, a bad use case or bad potential, uh, you know, meaning. But, you know, here we're, we're trying to educate the apes and, and, you know, make some smarter apes across the space. So, yeah, I saw ads, ads dropped out there. I'll just get them back unmuted. Yeah, sorry, it looks like Telegram's like. It's okay, look. man. We went about an hour and a half without Telegram messing up. So, you know, I'll call that a win in my book. Yeah, it's not too bad. <laughs> so yeah, we can what we can what we can do if you want to, Joel, if or or as if you want to get that demo set up, you know, for, for three, five minutes just uh on your side, we could cut the official recording for the AMA, keep it tight at about an hour and twenty-five minutes. And then we can jump in and, and re kind of re-record just a, a short demonstration of the, the bot. I, I don't know if, if again, I would love to do that. But if, if the timing maybe is getting a little bit tight, we could always do that offline. Like that's, again, not something that has to be done live. That's the nice thing about YouTube is we could always jump into a, you know, a little group chat, open up a VC call. Joel can screen share for me. I'll have my video editor jump in with me. We can record it. And we can just get it uploaded to the YouTube. So if, if timing on this is you know a little tight tonight, happy to if send that up and if, we can do if it offline. That, if that is on the table, then we'll definitely appreciate if we could take that option. Uh, definitely do it offline, and then that way, because Joel he 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 has complete admin access over the utility on the bot. Uh, but currently he's not at his laptop right now. He's obviously speaking over his phone. Uh, but yeah, if we could schedule that in, I and mean, then that way we could kind of yeah, organize no, well, it a bit. Better. Again, that's that's more. Uh, you know, we don't need a hard timeline on that. We'll, we're we're going to be in DMs. I know we have that group set up as well. So I'll pop back in. I'll drop the recording in the group after we're done. Um, You're a star. And, and then yeah, we'll set up a time for the call tomorrow. I know you mentioned later in the evening, so that should be no issues. And yeah, I mean, we don't have to even do the screen share tomorrow. But you know, while we're on the call chatting, we could even do the demo tomorrow. So yeah, we'll figure it out. But yeah, no, that no hard good. rush sounds good. tonight. But yeah, Super, no, um, thanks a lot, um, I think from my side, again, really rocked it. I, I got uh, two DMs yesterday from, from other keynotes that were on the panel. I know Funk from CoinMerge, the main one who hosted, he really enjoyed it. And I, I hope he tuned in. I know he mentioned he was going to try and catch uh, a piece of the AMA today. I hope he was able to come out. And then um, manager, I... I he had DM'd me saying that he really liked you guys as well. So I'm I'm hoping that he'll reach out and get in touch. He's got a great Scandinavian community built up over there. Um, yeah, some really good focus on education too. So yeah, like you guys crushed it. I'm really impressed. I love the use case. I know Buck's a big fan of of the two of you over there uh, at Astro X and what you're building. So 
great job. I mean, we're lucky. I always joke, we're lucky. We we get some of the, you know, not always the highest market caps. And and I personally love the the lower market caps that have a lot of potential. Like you guys are sub one million and I've uh, been at this for almost six months and kind of hit, you know, hitting that peak. Like I said, once utilities get over that six month period, you know, you can you can really start to have some fun. So you're almost on that cusp and and I can't you know I can't wait to see you know what the future holds. So you know that being said, yeah, guys, thanks. you know I, I always kind of have to say that you know the the misnomer. It's you know join the join the community, do your own research. Obviously, it's not financial advice, but what we heard today, the concept, you know, the passion these guys have for the the space and keeping it safe. I love that, and I'm I'm definitely going to try and do what I can to to help support them. So um, I'll give you the mic just to close out officially from from Astro X. Crushed it. Great, great job, guys. Really enjoyed it. Nice one. Thanks a lot. If Joel wanted to just pop, I know he's on his phone. If he if he needed to pop, yeah, in, uh, yeah, yeah. That seems very good at speaking. So I let him handle it. He did an amazing job. I really appreciate that scene. So I always always appreciate uh, your efforts. Um, just to close it out. I really appreciate uh, not only you, Maurice, but uh, all your listeners and your community for joining, taking the time out of their busy schedules to to listen to you know what AstroX is, what we offer, and you know where we're taking this in the future. And then finally, just a, a shout out to the AstroX community. Um, I always say that that communities make tokens, tokens don't make communities. Um, and we would not be here today uh, with you or where we are now with our development or building or where we're taking this without their their unwavering support and and dedication to to, to supporting AstroX and, and being there and and sticking with us through the trials and tribulations that that we've emerged through. So it's so all like invaluable. To, to us and infinite thanks to them for, for being there for us. You guys have a, a solid community and you've uh, amassed a pretty impressive list of collaborations and different partnerships across the space as well. So, you know, you know, definitely seen a number of those roll out in the last 45 days or so. And that typically what happens once you start to get that, that brand recognition starting in the space. So, like I said, exciting times ahead, uh, I think over there for you guys at Astro X and I can't wait to, to chat more tomorrow. So we'll set up the official time in, in that group and then we'll jump on that uh, that call to chat about, about the idea. But really, again, one final time on behalf of Caesars Calls and the Apes here, um, thank you so much to Ed Seen and Joel from the team at Astro X for coming out. Really cool utility project uh, at this point focused on ETH for the wallet tracking, but I know there's some some plans in the works. So you guys are kind of getting to hear about it uh, early and and I always appreciate those teams for coming by.